Hello everyone, my name is Iago. I'm working as a summer student at the University of Sussex and also working with the Atlas experiment at CERN. And this video is part of a tutorial series from Atlas Open Data. Today, we'll be learning how to make selection cuts with PyRoot. These cuts can be used in many cases, but they are a key part of data analysis with the histograms in particle physics. This video is divided into three sections, underlying physics, root concepts, and root coding, in which we will walk through a Jupyter notebook together. Each section has its timestamp indicated on the screen now and in the progress bar below. Feel free to start from any of them according to your needs. When dealing with data measuring in proton proton collisions at the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC in short, we must consider the unique conditions under which these physical events happen. Differently from our observable world, where matter is measured in kilograms and energy is not densely packed, particle collisions as sun take physics from the classical perspective into the relativistic one. With the help of electric fields to accelerate charged particles and magnets to steer their movement around the circular beam line, the LHC achieves energy levels up to 13 teraelectron volts through a series of loops such as the PS, the proton synchrotron, and the SPS, the super proton synchrotron. Because of such conditions, the mass energy equivalency stated by Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, is seen in these setups when beams of protons have their trajectories fine-tuned to intersect one another. An analogy to this triumph of engineering is something akin to firing two needles 10 kilometers apart with such precision that they meet halfway. Meanwhile, detectors such as Atlas measure with great precision the conversion of this energy into decay particles to study the inner workings of the universe. A key concept in relativistic kinematics, the study of movement near the speed of light, is a four vector. In general, a four vector takes coordinates in four dimensions, spacetime, to be transformed, mapped, into an order set of coordinates in the same geometry, but different frame of reference or perspective. For example, look at how each of those arrows change uniformly, rotating by the same angle. That is what we call a linear transformation, in this case, a rotation by 90 degrees. A more specific application of four vector is four momentum. It is the generalized form of three dimensional momentum into four dimension space time momentum, hence, it's a type of four vector. What it does is to get the classical mass times velocity interpretation of momentum and multiply it by a factor, the Lorentz factor, which allows for relativity to come into play as the object's velocity approaches the speed of light. And then what we have is the partition of our four momentum into the three dimensional spaces, X, Y, and Z, and the energy of the particle. In summary, particles are accelerated to near light speed at the LHC, allowing for matter energy conversions and requiring relativistic kinematics. And four momentum is a four vector that generalizes 3D classical momentum into 4D spacetime or relativistic momentum. Before delving into the notebook, let's look at some of the syntax and concepts used in our upcoming coded data analysis. To declare the four momentum of our DK particles, we are going to use the T Lorentz vector class in part root. It is a general four vector class which can be used either for the description of position and time, or which is used in this analysis, momentum and energy. So the momentum in the x axis and the y axis, z axis, and the energy of the particle. Since we are interested in both the form momentum and orientation of this particle, we're going to use the method set pt eta phi e to declare the transverse momentum of the particle, the two important angles for their orientation, and its energy. Moving to the core of this notebook, selection cuts can be explained through three main points. First of all, they're used to filter the data, reducing background processes that obstruct the search for a signal. And this process always decreases the amount of available data, but it increases the information that we get about the signal. You can imagine this as tuning a radio to find your favorite channel instead of noisy static. In Python, this is stated with a for loop that loops over all the entries of a data, then with if statements, there are our proper selection cuts, essentially letting the data to pass or not, so that at the end, we can do histofill to populate our histogram with all of the filtered data. In summary, a T Lorentz vector is a four vector that defines the four momentum of a particle, and a selection cut filters the data to reduce background processes and improve the detection of a signal. Now let's delve into our notebook. After clicking in the link in the description, we will go into the readme file and click on launch a binder. 
A binder is a virtual machine that allows you to work with the notebook without having to download it. For now, I'm going to wait for it to load. Once it loads, you're going to see this screen, which is the repository of the Atlas Open Data Notebooks. We're now going to click on 13 Terra Electron Votes examples, and then on Python, and click on the second histogram, Invariant Mass Reconstruction Use Steel Events Vectors. Once the notebook loads, we're going to click on Not Trusted, then Trust, to allow for all the plots to properly load. Before we go to the code itself, let's look at the physical phenomenon we're dealing with. Here we have a Feynman diagram of the Z boson stationary in space but moving through time, decaying at the same time into two particles, an electron and a positron. As we can see, charge is conserved since the positive and negative charge cancel each other, and before we also had a neutral charge. We also see a different example of decay. But what matters here is that our Z boson is decaying into two or four leptons of the same flavor but of different charges. As for any analysis using root, we first import the library itself by writing import and root. This line allows for some interactivity with the plots, but if you find that it generates some bugs, you can comment it out like this. We then need to open the file with all the data we're going to use. We do so by declaring a variable f and then inside the root library getting the tfile.open and then writing as a string the address of our file. Below we see the file with four leptons, but let's stick with two leptons for this analysis. We then need to declare a canvas to plot all of our histograms. So we state a variable canvas and then inside the root library we get tcanvas and then we declare the identity, the name and the dimensions in length and height in pixels. Inside the root file, we need to get a specific tree. So we declare a variable tree equals to f inside the file. We're going to get the tree called mini. To see how many entries we have, let's just do tree.getEntries. And then we see that we have 53,653 entries in total inside the mini tree. Now, since we're using histogram, we also need to declare it. So we get a variable his, and then inside the root library, we get thif, and then the name of our histogram. And we are going to look at the mass of our Z boson in giga electron votes. So that's is going to be our title. We're going to have a number 30 bins, and we're going to go from 40 GeV up to 140 GeVs, which means that our x axis will have the mass and our y axis the amount of events with such properties. Now we begin dealing with the selection cuts. So we first declare the let leptin as a root t Lorentz vector, and we do the same thing for our trail leptin. So now we have two leptons being declared as their four momentum. If you remember from the slides, to begin with the selections, we need to first have a for loop to go over each entry. So we do for event in the tree. And as our first cut, we're going to remove any event that has less than two leptons. So we do if tree dot leptin number equals and greater than two, then we pass along the data. With our second cut, we're going to ensure that the leptons have opposite charge. So if the charge of the first leptin is different from the charge of the second leptin, then we pass on the data. We then go to our final cut, which is to ensure that the both leptins have the same flavor. So if the type or flavor of the first leptin is equal to the type or flavor of the second leptin, we also pass on the data. Now we're going to use the properties of the Tilrent vector, specifically the method set PTFFIE. So we declare the transverse momentum, the two angles key for the orientation, and the energy of each of our leptons. So we do that for the light lepton and for the trail lepton. And now we move on to the calculation required to find the mass of the Z boson, which is to calculate its invariant mass as a sum of the left lepton and the trail lepton. And then finally, we populate the histogram with the calculating variant mass of that specific event. To actually plot our charts, we need to do his.draw. Then let's set the color to be something like green. So we do his dot set fill color three. And also remember that the histogram and any other plots are dependent on a canvas. So we do canvas dot draw as well. The result is a histogram with the title mass of the Z boson, an x axis stating the mass in giga electron votes going from 40 to 140, and on the y axis the amount of events in each of the bins. We can also see uh, some statistical information about our data. So we have 37,415 entries, which is a smaller value than our previous 53,653 which means that we are actually filtering through the data and it also gives us a mean value of the mass of the Z boson as roughly 91 giga electron volts and also the standard deviation as roughly 7.9. What other sorts of cuts can you think of that would come in handy for that analysis? Leave your ideas in the comment section below. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next time.